right, everybody, welcome to this video from Tops Knives. Clearly, what I'm saying doesn't match what I'm actually saying on the video. That's because we had corruption with our audio, so... All right, this is the knife. We probably get the most questions about how to sharpen. You get to hear me dubbed over the video. Today's video is about the tracker and how to sharpen it. This is the knife that, more than anything, people ask us, how do you sharpen this? And so we're going to show you how to do that today. So probably the, 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 the part that everybody struggles with, with the tracker, mainly is this, this quarter round portion is what it's called. That's the portion between the draw knife and the portion between the rounded part of the tracker. For this video, for me in particular, uh, it's easier for me to use the blade grinder attachment on the work sharp Ken Onion Edition uh, powered sharpener to sharpen that because it's for me, it's the easiest way to get that quarter rounder and keep the point on it. Um, it's easier than pretty much any other sharpening system I've used. So, uh, plus I have one of these in my home and I use it for my own knives. So I'm familiar with its functionality to begin with. Um, but uh, this this particular setup, the blade grinder attachment is extra. It's not included automatically with the Ken Onion Edition. It's something you got to buy extra, but it's totally worth it. It allows you to freehand sharpen things, everything from lawnmower blades to large, long knives, um, everything. It also comes with this handy-dandy uh, like cheat sheet that's got quick, t quick tips. It also asks questions like, what knife are you sharpening? And then gives you an idea of what, uh, what belts you should use and the progression you should use to try to get the knife as sharp as you want. Um, even angles and even some directions for how to use it. Uh, so it's definitely something that you want to use. The quick tips are pretty cool. They basically tell you that for every inch of travel on the blade, it should take about one second uh, for you to do to move one inch. So that's handy. That gives you a that gives you a pretty clean base, so that as you're moving the knife across the belt, it's uh, it's going to be even. If you move faster and slower and, and you can't keep a consistent speed, you're not going to get a consistent edge. So, blade grinder attachment comes with a set of belts. It starts with an extra coarse grit, which is uh, roughly the equivalent of a 120 grit belt. Um, they call that extra coarse for sharpening. That is pretty coarse. For regular blade grinding, it's not so coarse. Uh, but basically, you start with a 120 grit belt and then it moves up in... Uh, in grit progression clear up to a polishing belt that's actually like a 6,000 grit so um, as you're depending on how dull your knife is you may not actually start with the the roughest grit you may just start up one or two grits even to begin with if you've got a knife that's pretty much sharp anyway and you just want to touch up the edge then you know you don't need to start with the extra coarse grit you could start probably at the medium and be good to go but for this knife, uh, it got beat up a little bit before we did this video specifically so that we could resharpen it. And uh, so we're going to start with the, the extra coarse grit. Um, we're going to run that a few times and then we're just going to move up the progression and get it to where it is as sharp as we can get it. Exactly how to use the machine, all the, all the little details, all the little functionality. Um, refer to the machine itself, the, the manual that comes with it is... is is handy there's a lot of there's a lot of little steps but once you get those down it's pretty easy um there's nothing too nothing too crazy about this and uh after you sharpen a few knives on it you really get you get used to how to use it real quick all right so we're going to turn this on uh we've sped the video up a little bit so you can so you don't have to watch it go as slow as possible Basically, the idea here is that you're trying to keep a 25 degree edge on each side of the knife. That's what we use on our grinders here in the building. And if you can see that on the video here, this is actually set up at that 25 degree angle also. So the, the way that I sharpen the tracker is I start with the rounded portion first, because for me that's just a little bit easier. And the idea is that you want to start right where that point of the quarter round begins and run it all the way to the tip and do that on each side until you create a burr and especially if your edge is damaged um, you're going to use it until you get all the chips out all the rolls and, and you're going to do it till you have a pretty clean edge with just a burr on the one side 
So the, the two wheels on this, you can see where uh, basically once the machine is running, you put the edge in between those two wheels that are up near the top. That's what gives you the actual 25 degree edge that you're looking for. There's also a plate on the front of this where you can set your knife flat and then just lift it straight up from there to put it onto the, onto the belt. That's how you keep your 25 degree edge. And again, start right at the corner of that quarter round, move at a consistent speed all the way up to the tip. And you're just trying to keep that edge on each side until you get all the way across. This knife was pretty damaged. Um, so even usually with this extra coarse belt, a couple of passes in is enough, but this knife had enough damage near that quarter round that there was a chip that took me a little bit longer to, to work it out. So that's what I'm pointing at there. It's still not quite right, so we're going to do a couple more passes, and then we'll move on to the quarter round portion. And that is where it gets tricky for people. So I'm feeling the burr. I got a burr on it, which is good. That's what you want, especially when you're starting out with your rougher grits. So here's the extra passes just to work out that little chip that was left over. We also put on safety glasses because, you know, you don't want to get metal shavings in your eye. That's not fun. And the speed on this, um, so you can adjust the speed on this on this work sharp uh, sharpener for for pretty much this entire video. We just ran it at about a at a at a, at a medium speed, kind of kind of halfway. Um, that for most applications, that's going to be plenty. It's not too fast that uh, you're going to grind away too much material and it's not too slow that you're going to get the knife really hot. So now for the quarter round portion, for me, it's easiest to start where the quarter round starts. So you're trying to start right on the tip of that quarter round and then you just kind of push the blade a little bit at a time into the belt and then run it across the side. So rather than starting near the handle, which is where naturally most people would start, it's easier to start at the quarter round and work your way in slowly. Basically the whole knife is not going to make, the, the whole blade is not going to make contact with the belt all at once. So the belt is an inch wide, but you're not making contact on a whole inch of blade at a time. You're making contact on them, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch at a time, maybe a little bit more. And so that's how you can kind of start on that corner and then push in and then run it along the edge until you, you get it sharp. But for me, it's easier to start on the quarter round instead of work my way into the quarter round. That might be backwards for you. You might find it easier to go the other way, but find a way that works for you and, and do that. For me, I start on the quarter round and work into it. Um, one other important detail. As you get to where you finish, don't just, don't continue moving the, the knife to the side. You want to lift straight off of the off of the belt. Same thing, when you get to the tip of the blade, you want to just lift off of the belt instead of pushing completely off. That's how that's how people round the tips of their blades and then never get the tip back. So you can see we start kind of on that quarter round and then just kind of push in and run it along the side. You can almost you can almost see it roll in a little bit. So I'm 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 kind of rolling it in so that the the quarter round gets clean. So we create a burr, we get that finished up, and now we're going to swap out the belt. We move from the extra course up to the next belt. I, I always recommend that you don't skip belts. So if you start on extra course, don't go from that to fine. Go from extra course to course and work your way up. If you skip grits, you can, you can kind of leave a, an edge that's not consistent and that's kind of toothy and it's just not real, it's just not a really clean edge. So on this belt, we're going to do pretty much the same thing as the last belt. It's still pretty coarse, so you don't want to do a lot of passes. You want to do just a few passes to refine the edge a little bit, keep the burr going, and then as you get to the finer grits, that's where you'll work the burr out. One thing that you'll notice here, the, I'm, I'm turning what's called the tracking knob. So every time you swap out the belts, you've, you'll find that they may not be perfectly centered on those wheels. If they're not, that tracking knob helps uh, keep the belts where they should be. So that's an important step that uh, that you don't want to miss because if you get the belt too close to the edge and start trying to sharpen, you might push the belt off the edge of the machine, which can damage the machine, damage your knife, and possibly damage you. So you can see with that belt, we want to do just a couple of passes on each side. 
one thing to be careful of when you're when you're pushing that quarter round in on the belt, depending on how you have it angled, you might actually hit the middle of the of the draw portion of the knife on the belt. You want to be careful not to do that because if you do, you might mess up your angle and you might have a hard time getting that part sharp. So that's one thing that uh, you always want to be careful of what's making contact with the belt um, and just kind of the, the angles that you use as you do this. So we refine that edge a little bit. We're going to switch from coarse to medium and we're going to run that a few more times than we did the first couple of belts. At this point, you're getting to where you're, you're kind of getting to where you're honing rather than sharpening. And uh, so that's why it's gonna take a few more passes. There's a lot less material coming off, but you're really, you're really dialing in the, uh, the edge. So at this point, you wanna be real careful to make sure that you're, you're consistent on your angles. Because if you're not, this is where you're gonna ruin the sharpness that you're starting to create. So for this type of knife, the tracker, you don't need you don't need to really polish this out to where you have a super polished edge that's got a mirror finish on it and, and things like that. This 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 kind of knife, really on this medium grip belt, that's probably enough to take it back out in the woods and continue beating on it. Because for the most part, the tracker, you're you're chopping wood, you're cutting things that are they're not super fine. You're not out there like trying to bone bone meats and you're not out there trying to like you're not trying to cut things that are that are going to require real precise real real clean cuts so sometimes that toothier edge that you have from a little bit rougher grit actually works a little better because it's going to be stronger and it's going to cut real well on things like wood so for me a lot of times i'll stop here on that medium belt i'll run it over a strop a few times and then i'm pretty much done and i'll, I'll just take that out and continue using it but that's not the point of this video, so we're gonna go ahead and do some more belts. We're gonna get this, uh, we're gonna get this near polished, and uh, we're gonna get it as sharp as we can for you. All right, so we're gonna swap that belt out. That was the medium belt. Now we're gonna switch to what they, what WorkSharp considers a fine belt, which is, which is actually very fine. Um, you know, if you're looking at sandpaper in the store, what they're gonna consider fine, and what WorkSharp is gonna consider fine for sharpening, not the same thing. This is a way finer grit. So on this one, you're going to run, again, probably a few more passes than you did on the coarse grit belts. I'm trying to pay real close attention to the angle that you're putting on each time. And now you're really, you're, you're basically, you're, you're pushing that burr back and forth and making it smaller and smaller until you get rid of it completely. And that is what gets your edge sharp. So at this point it should definitely be sharp. Um, there's a lot of ways to check for sharpness. You can kind of run your finger sideways along the edge and it should feel it should feel pretty sharp. It should feel pretty uh, pretty rough. From here though, we are gonna switch from that fine to the extra fine belt. And that belt right there is is really thin, it's really flexible. You'll notice once you turn the machine on that it kinda it's it's a little more wobbly than the than the other belts. Um, this is basically the equivalent of a 6,000 grit uh, sandpaper, and so it's going to give you a super super fine finish. This is where you pretty much get a polished edge. <laughs> even after this belt, there's actually others that are that are even finer. Um, WorkSharp does sell a a strapping belt kit which is just a couple of cloth belts that have uh, that have a compound that you put on them and uh, those will get it even more polished. Um, one other thing to note here that uh, that you may not be able to tell just from watching the video, the amount of pressure that, and I'm sorry I was not flipping you off, uh, the amount of pressure that you're putting on the uh, on the belt is very minimal. You're not pushing down 
with the hand that's that's resting on the blade. That hand is just to help you to, to help guide you across the belt and keep it smooth. Um, really, you just want to make contact with the belt, and then run it across. The belt is going to do all of the work. You don't need to push hard. In fact, the harder you push, the the more you're going to round your edge, and it's going to get so convex that it just won't. You won't even be able to get it sharp. So. Again, you don't need to put a lot of pressure. You just need to get the the, the blade onto the belt and then start moving. The, the pressure is very light. One other thing I do, I don't know if this is something you have to do or need to do, but one thing that I do is, is as I get to, especially to this belt where the grit is so fine that you're really just trying to polish the edge, I even put less pressure when I'm using these, these finer grit belts because I'm not trying to move the burr from side to side anymore, I'm trying to get rid of it. So the harder you push down, the more you're just gonna push the burr to the other side. But if you're, if you're going a little bit lighter in pressure, then you're working that burr completely off of the, off of the edge. Um, at least that's what I feel. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm full of crap, but uh, that's what I do. So I, I'm, I'm pushing, I'm putting even lighter pressure on that now than I was on the, uh, with the other belts. All right, I think I got it. Everything feels pretty sharp to me. I'm gonna test that edge, make sure that, make sure that it looks good. But what we're really gonna do is we're gonna get our master sharpener, Carlos, up here. And he's gonna, he's gonna test this knife as if he had sharpened it and uh, make sure that we got it up to par for what he would consider sharp. So what I'm doing with my fingernail there is I'm just, I'm running it along the edge to see if it catches anywhere. If it feels slick and smooth all the way across that edge on my fingernail, then it means I got the whole burr, burr taken off. Uh, if it catches, if it doesn't feel smooth, if it feels rough, that means that there's something that I missed or there's a, there's a piece of the, of the blade that I missed when I was sharpening it. There's those strapping belts I was talking about. They are actually some kind of a cloth belt that have that are non-abrasive, and the strapping compound is what actually adds an abrasive to the belt, which is even finer than that 6,000 grit belt that I just used. Those strapping belts are definitely kind of an extra. It's not something you need to have. Um, with this 6,000 grit belt, that's an extra fine. I mean, that's a really, really fine grit. You don't really need the strapping belts. Um, you should be able to get something, I mean, hair, par hair popping sharp with that extra fine belt. The, uh, the strapping kit is great for those who, probably more, more people who are using maybe a, a kitchen knife that they want to have super sharp or, or a pocket knife that they always want to have just razor sharp. Um, or you just enjoy sharpening your knives and you want your, your stuff to be polished. Um, the other part of the tracker that we can't forget to do is the teeth. So what I'm doing now is I'm swapping the machine around. Um, the saw, there's actually, this blade grinding attachment is, is pretty cool because it has a flat platen on one side uh, so that you can sharpen things that need to keep kind of a flat angle. So if you've got a knife that you're putting a 90 degree spine on, you could use that. If you've got a, uh, or, or in this case, saw teeth, uh, like on any of our knives, you can actually use that flat side of the platen to resharpen the saw teeth uh, if you use those quite a bit. One thing I will say, when you do this, when you do our saw teeth in particular, you want to use probably a probably the, the extra coarse grip belt. You don't need to get a polished edge on the saw teeth because it's it's not like a normal blade edge. So if you if you polish it really, really nice, you're not going to have the sharp corners and, the, and the, the bite that you would get um, if you leave kind of a coarser finish on those. So I would use the extra coarse grip belt. The, um, the angle that we use to put the, the saw teeth on our knives is about seven degrees. Um, so basically you're going to put the extra coarse grip belt on and the teeth are opposing pitch. So each tooth is facing the opposite direction as the other tooth. And so they go back and forth. That's kind of the same concept as a chainsaw or, or really almost any saw. And that's, that's how they cut is the, the teeth opposing each other uh, kind of bite into things. Our saw teeth are great for making notches or great for scoring bone. They're not so great for just completely cutting down a tree. 
So again, as you're as you're working on these teeth, you're just trying to meet the flat part of the of the belt onto the flat part of the teeth. And what I'm doing is I'm doing one tooth and then I'm skipping a tooth and then doing another tooth and then skipping a tooth because again they're opposing pitch. So if you just do each tooth, then you're gonna you're gonna mess up the, the teeth that way. Um, that part should be pretty quick for the most part. Um, it should just be a quick touch up. And, and again, really, really important. Don't push hard on the belt right there. You want it to barely be making contact with the belt. If you push that belt in, you're going you're gonna to make the teeth convex. And then they're definitely not going to feel sharp because they're going to be round. You want to keep them flat. So barely making contact with the belt. And then just try to keep that 7 degrees. And each, uh, every other tooth is what you're trying to do. Then flip the knife around and do every other tooth the other direction. This knife is now sharp and Carlos is going to test my work and he's being very generous and uh, I think he's just trying to be nice but he did say it was sharp so success we did it you can do it too I know the tracker is a little bit scary it's kind of a, it's kind of a tricky knife to sharpen but if you kind of follow the concepts that I'm talking about in this video um, you'll find that you can get your tracker sharp keep that quarter rounded point where it is um, and just you know keep this knife working in good condition for you without having to send it in for us to resharpen so so as Carlos is testing this edge um, you know he's he's he said it's pretty clean everything looks uh, everything looks real nice um, now he's just kind of having fun cutting the paper because that's fun um, but yeah he's a, he said it was he said it was overall it was it was very sharp. He would he would push it through. He said the only thing that uh, that he would probably do to make it even sharper is just run it over. So we use two by seventy two inch belt grinders here. We also use buff uh, bench grinders, and they so we have we have leather wheels and we have leather belts that we use to finish our our edges on. He said that he would probably run this knife over one of those like one or two times. And then it would be completely done and ready to, to ship out. So you can get your knife as sharp as we get it, if not sharper, using these concepts. So everybody, thanks for watching. Um, again, the tracker can be a very tricky knife to sharpen. But if you follow the directions that we, that we have here and just kind of the concepts of what we're, what we're trying to show you, um, it's not that bad. and It's actually fairly easy to do. Uh, if you don't have... The work sharp with the belt, uh, with the belt attachment, with this uh, this blade grinding attachment. Some other things that will work are sharpening rods. Um, they're great because you can keep that rounded, uh, the quarter round part round, uh, because the shape of your rod is round. So that's another option. Um, some people do use stones, and you can as well. You just kind of use the edge of the stone to get the quarter rounded part sharp. Um, and then the, really the rest of the concept of this video would still apply. Um, but again, point is, uh, yes, it can be daunting, but the tracker can be sharpened. So thanks again for watching and enjoy.